Hello, everyone. A big thank you to Rich Mullins for inviting me to share my story here at the Youth Education Summit and to Lillian Ricky of Australia for introducing me to Rich. You are doing good work here at the summit, and I'm sure you will inspire others with all your stories. Thank you for your trust. I honor your presence here right now. Now, who would like their kids and teens to be happy, healthy, and wealthy? If you want that, type me in the comment section. For today, I will be speaking to you about how to prepare kids for the new economy in seven steps. What I will share with you today are my story on how I started my financial education journey, the status of financial education in the world, the seven developmental stages of financial literacy that I created, and what you can do as parents in teaching financial literacy to your children. If you stay until the end, I will share with you a copy of my ebook on how to raise money smart kids. I'm Dr. Marnie Moya Prudential. Easy to remember because Dr. Marnie sounds like money. I have been practicing as a child development specialist for 20 years and I teach growth and development to medical students. I was also given awards for my advocacy with autism and my work with the community. I'm an author of two books and an international speaker. Financial literacy advocacy is uh, what I've been doing for the past 10 years, and I help facilitate cash flow one-on-one -on -one workshops and help hundreds of people understand their personal financial statements. I was so focused on my career as a doctor that it took 10 years and two miscarriages to have our son, JR. My husband and I were hands-on in taking care of him. Our son is very precious to us. I only want the best for him, and I want to make sure he grows up well. Any parent would want that for their child. Now, why is a doctor like me involved in financial literacy? Blame it on this little boy. When my son was in preschool, I realized that I have to make a decision between having a stellar career as a doctor or being a hands-on mother. I was invited to be a consultant in one of the premier pediatric hospitals in our country, and this would mean that I would be busy in my career. I told my five-year-old son about it and informed him it would not be me anymore who will fetch him from school from now on, but a nanny and a driver. My son seemed annoyed at what he heard. Do you know what he told me? He said, but mommy, that would be such a downgrade. I asked him, what do you mean by downgrade? He said it would be a downgrade from five-star service to two-star service. Oh, that answer floored me. My son really wants me around to personally take care of him. Right there and then, I decided to be a hands-on mother instead and just work part-time in my chosen field. This means that the money I earn won't be that much compared to being in a full-time practice. That's when I realized that I'm forced to make a decision. My child is important to me, but I also need to earn money. In my mind, I was struggling between my child's needs and my need to help earn money for my family. Even if I'm a doctor, I don't have passive income. I am forced to cut down on my practice, and that's where I have to struggle financially. From then on, I made two important decisions. The first important decision, my child is more important, and I compromised my career. I didn't follow the typical career path. The second decision, my child will never go into the same compromise decision as me. In all my years of study, I realized that I was never really taught the basics of financial education. I want to make sure that by the time my son actually encounters such a situation, he doesn't have to decide whether he should compromise his family for money. Because there may be a chance under pressure, people may actually compromise their family over money. I had to make a decision. I chose my family. What about you? Have you faced this decision before? So if I'm going to learn this thing, I have to know what financial literacy is all about. Financial literacy refers to not only financial knowledge, but behavior as well. Even in advanced economies with well-developed financial markets, financial literacy is low. Let's see what's the status of financial education in the world and how do we measure up. Why is this important to learn? I'll show you something very scary. This is the Global Financial Literacy Survey by s and in 2015. It measured people's knowledge of risk diversification, inflation, numeracy, and compound interest. It shows that a lot of people are financially illiterate. This study showed 3.5 billion people, that is half of our planet's population, especially in developing countries, lack financial education. 
This is how it is in my part of the world. Let's look at the statistics in Southeast Asia. In my country, the Philippines, three out of four people are financially illiterate, which means for every four people, three are trapped by money. This is so scary. And in other countries, it's very bad. Why is this bad? Because if you leave it to chance, there will be a high chance that you will be stuck because of money. This is the kind of world our children are living in. I'm fighting against the social norm. This is a fight against financial illiteracy. This is a war against the lack of financial education. It is a protection for my child and for myself. If your child is academically smart, plus he's the one in four people who are financially literate in my country, wouldn't he or she be a step higher than his peers who just went through just the typical traditional ed academic education? My thinking as a parent, I am not only preparing my son for a career, my job as a parent is to prepare him for life. Money will be part of our lives from the day we are born until the day we die. The lack of financial literacy comes from the population's financial ignorance. This ignorance leads to bad daily financial decisions which can lead to everlasting bad debts. The problem is the lack of financial education is passed on from generation to generation. Adults' financial habits at home influence the younger generation's financial habits. I'll give you an example. I have a patient with autism that I saw when he was in preschool. They were then lost to follow up. They came back to me when he was 14 years of age and he was morbidly obese and his behavior is difficult to manage. I asked the mom, why is he so big? The mom said that when he was young and he wanted something from the store in the neighborhood, he learned the habit of going to the store point to what he wanted, usually cola and junk food, and say to the store owner, lista. This is a Filipino word, and in English, it means the store owner will write down what he got from the store, and at the end of the week, the mom will pay for what he got, which usually amounts to 500 pesos. This behavior was left unchecked for several years, and when they realized at the age of 14, that if the store owner will not give what he wanted as per mom's instructions, he would shake the small store and have a tantrum and ruin the store. So eventually the store owner will give in. This is an extreme example in one of my patients. That is why I find it important for parents to learn the basics because the children are watching them as role models. Bad habits, if left unchecked, will be a big problem later in life. Values are caught, not taught. That's when I realized I not only have to teach my son, but my patients and their families as well. In this study, the young adults wish they were taught about finances early in their lives. Financially savvy people are more likely to accumulate wealth, plan for retirement, and appreciate the value of compound interest. Planning is a very strong predictor of wealth. Those who plan arrive close to retirement with two to three times the amount of wealth as those who do not plan. It plays a critical role in saving and wealth accumulation. You should teach your children how to plan early on. You also have to train them to make decisions early in life. And this is what I teach in my workshops, knowing your financial roadmap and planning, and then the rest will follow. Okay. A study by Lusardi in 2018 showed that mobile payment users show low levels of financial literacy. Mobile payment users display expensive financial behaviors. We have to teach the young generation how to manage this technology. For teenagers right now, 9 out of 10, they are in trouble. Only 1 out of 10 are trained for financial literacy. So I realized very few parents actively train their children for financial literacy. Only one out of 10 parents do this. If you are a parent, are you consciously training your child? Do you have a plan? If you don't have a plan, I can tell you, your child is part of the nine out of 10 who is financially illiterate. Some schools are fighting this now because they see the seriousness of this. As a parent, are you doing something about it because there are only so many things that schools can do. But where is money found? In the home, right? Where do children learn about money? In the home. Do you want your kids and teens to be financially illiterate? Most of us know what our roadmap is. In traditional education, you go 
to a good school, graduate, get a diploma, apply for a job, or start a career. Do most people know what is their financial roadmap? What I did was combine the two, especially for my son's educational journey. And we found the right mentors for both me and my son to move forward in this quest. And one of my mentors told me that we should know our financial roadmap first. That's why in my program for teens, we have to start with planning their financial education first and the knowledge will follow. How did I apply these concepts? To commemorate the birth of my son, we planted a mango tree in our backyard and it started to bear fruit after five years. And every year it brings in money for him. It coincided with the start of his financial education 10 years ago. He negotiated his first royalty income when he was eight years old because he realized the opportunity when his picture was placed on the cover of my first book. He, and then he was eventually uh, fortunate enough to be accepted as a scholar in a prestigious science high school, so his tuition fee is free. We use the allotted tuition fee for high school and his financial education. He is exposed to a lot of workshops and courses, as well as business experiences. Some worked and some didn't. But we found it as good training to know how to handle rejection and improve resilience. When JR was 13 years of age, he decided to focus on trading in the Forex market as he understood the concept well and it fits his daily routine. He looks at his trades for 10 to 15 minutes every day on the way to school in the morning. And he has lost a lot of money. He was really frustrated, but he knew he doesn't want to quit. So he persevered, analyzed his trades, and strategized on how he can be better. This is what he told me. He said, Mommy, bad trades are like Thanos. They are inevitable. <laughs> I laughed at the Avengers analogy. This experience made him more resilient, and now he learned how to manage his emotions when it comes to money. This is a screenshot um, of his trades, and as you can see, he earned more than $100 for that day. If you know what to do, you can use fintech to your advantage and earn money instead of spending money online. During the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, even though JR's academic education stopped, his financial education kept him busy because he can trade from Monday to Friday. I did this because I love my boy and I wanted him to have the best education possible. I don't want him to be part of the 75% who lack financial literacy in my country. As a neurodevelopmental pediatrician practicing for around 20 years now, I also needed a template to teach the children I see who have difficulties in the traditional academically centered schools. We don't want them to waste time sitting in classes they couldn't comprehend when they can use that time to learn a skill that they can earn from. What I did in my practice is to incorporate financial education with my patients' traditional education. If they are not thriving anymore in the traditional educational system, it is easy for them to transition and focus on their financial education and start earning money at an early age. I have a patient with autism that I saw when she was in preschool. Her mom showed to me her talent in art. I told her to develop that talent and find a mentor to guide her. They can hone this talent even a few minutes a day together with her academic education. During the pandemic, when her academic education stopped, she continued to hone her craft and was able to sell her paintings online and started earn money. This is the painting I bought from my 14-year-old patient. She thrived during the pandemic because... Her mom listened to my advice on starting to teach financial education early to her child. With financial education, your brain is wired to be more aware and more open to opportunities available out there in the real world. Even with the same mobile device, people see things differently. Depends on the kind of education they are exposed to. A brain with no exposure to financial education looks at digital media differently. They look at online games, movie showings, uh, gossip, fashion items, or sales, compared to a brain that has financial education. A brain with exposure to financial education, looking at the same digital media, we look at real estate listings, stock prices, business opportunities, or personal development courses. So you can see they are looking at the same device, but they are seeing things differently in their minds 
depending on the kind of education they're exposed to. So how did I come up with the seven developmental stages of financial literacy? This idea was formed in my mind while I was writing my second book during an author's boot camp in Tagaytay City, Philippines. I had writer's block and I was stuck and not going anywhere as I was writing my second book. My mentor told me to go out of my hotel room and walk outside. As I was walking on a path in the woods, I observed a snail slowly crossing the path. It reminded me of my patients who try their best to learn even though they are slow, but they try to keep on moving forward. This gave me an aha moment. It gave me an idea. Looking at the tip of the snail shell, I flipped it over in my head and saw a pyramid. Then, then inspiration struck me, and I went inside my room and wrote up the structure, which is now the seven developmental stages of financial literacy. This is like the financial house that protects you from a financial storm like the COVID-19 pandemic. If you don't have this house, you are like a slug with no financial protection and can easily be affected by forces beyond your control. My son is already at the sixth stage. He's investing and accumulating assets that produce passive income. It took him 10 years to reach this stage. My mentors who are at the seventh stage said it took them around 10 years or more from the sixth to the seventh stage. If you start to teach children early, they will have more options in life. Do you want to deny them that option? It's your choice. Children are great imitators, so give them something great to imitate. Do you want them to imitate good money habits or bad money habits? Do you want to pass on the experience of having a lot of bad debt or the experience of wealth and financial abundance and how to handle money properly? Don't wait for the school system to change. Take action now. If you think financial education is expensive, try ignorance. And this is the price of ignorance. At the end of your life, you are broke or worse, in debt or depending on the government and your kids for your retirement. The world has changed. We only have one life to live and we should give our kids and teens the options in life. A life of debt and despair or a life of abundance. We have to train them early so that they are well prepared to have a bright future. If you want to listen to my experiences in teaching financial literacy to kids and teens, as well as parenting and child development tips, you can follow me every Monday mornings on Facebook or be part of our community in Money Smart Families. Thank you for staying until the end of this talk. And as promised, you can have access to this book on how to raise money smart kids. It's my second book. It's what Robert Kiyosaki is holding here. And he is the international best-selling author of Rich Dad for Dad. This is where I share tips on what you can do in teaching financial literacy to your kids and teens. Thank you again and stay safe and healthy. Bye.